Hello there and uh, welcome to this uh, YouTube channel. So uh, this is going to be the first video uh, that I do um, as I build a uh, Calrec EQ or a clone of a Calrec EQ I should say. Um, so um, uh, I have been building guitar pedals for uh, many years, uh, mostly, mostly kits to begin with. Um, then I transitioned over to um, to building more like from from the the ground up with um, PCBs, pre-made PCBs, and I had done some tag boards as well, and some some tart boards. I have been repairing some guitar amps and, and synthesizers for a couple of a couple of years, um, and uh, yeah, had a general electronic interest for uh, for most of my life. Um, I during the days I work with uh, with Pro Audio Gear as well with with known manufacturers. So um, recent years I've been uh, been getting more into to Pro Audio kits and um, and uh, uh, custom builds. So um, yeah, that's what I've been doing. And uh, when I started building, I found that a lot of a lot of people would like build their units and they would disappear into studios and you couldn't find much information about them uh, and not much uh, much help or info uh, in regards to building uh, the units um, and uh, this it, this will not in any way be any tutorial or any like follow this and you'll you'll make it or or anything like that it just will just be uh, a little tracking of um, how I build uh, this unit and um, the different uh, problems I run into and different solutions I will find. Um, I will promise you I will will have problems. <laughs> I will have issues. There always are some some sort of problem that pops up or some sort of weird thing that that has to be solved. So, but I will. Um, I will not hide that from you. I will. I will let you know if I if I screw something up and uh, and how I solve it. Um, so uh, this uh, this unit is designed by Jakob Erland from Giraffe Audio. He designed uh, a lot of different DIY kits um, many years ago, and virtually started the whole the whole DIY uh, pro audio DIY um, uh, community back then. So many thanks to him. He has done a lot of a lot for for the DIY community. Um, these are from his uh, schematics from the the, the Calric EQ. Uh, that's from the, the famous Polar uh, mixing consoles and stuff like that. So um, these boards uh, seem to me they're excellent. Are from Pusherman, in the UK. Uh, two boards. I I suspect these are uh, two boards because you have a. Uh, uh, you have this Euro card standard, I, I believe. I, I know not, nothing about it, so I won't say anything more. But I, I suspect that it's that's why it's not a whole big board. So uh, we will make a stereo unit, or it won't be a true stereo unit, but it will be a rack with two units in it. So I have these two boards, and I have two additional boards here. So as I explained, this is not going to be like a straight uh, tutorial thing of a video. It's just going to be me building the unit and I'll give you small snapshots of where I am and and stuff like that. So first, the first thing to handle, uh, the, the PSU is going to be this um, uh, UMEC um, switch modes supply. Uh, I This is a, a, a really shot in the dark if it's, if it's going to work. Uh, these tend to create a lot of noise. Um, so, um, and and as far as I know, I, I I can't find anyone else who has built one with a with a switching supply. Uh, but um, there is no there is no harm in me trying it out. So it's it won't damage anything. Uh, so I'm going to try to use this. I pull this out of an uh, an old Echo um, uh, Echo sound card unit. So that's obsolete to say the least. So. Um, this should deliver. Um, um, let's see what we have here. We have uh, plus eighteen minus eighteen volts. So that's that's what we got. What we what we need for this unit. Uh, we also have a plus uh, six point seventy five rail. 
uh, that's supposed to handle the, the the digital stuff, I, I assume. But in this in this case, it will only power the the on lights of this unit. So um, it's going to be exciting to see if if this gonna this is going to work. For every builder, you'll have like a, every everyone has their own uh, way they they handle things. Um, I tend to be a lot of like uh, how shall I say not super tidy builder. Um, I I would guess I don't have all the parts for these even yet. So the switches are on their way, and the the pots are on their way. Um, probably most most builders would you like uh, like want to have all their units lined up nice and tidy. I have um, I have a mind at least to 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 to, to keep uh, keep check on everything that's going to happen to the unit. So I, I don't need to have all the every single part here ready before I start working. So uh, I'm going to start with populating this uh, these boards and um, standard uh, low profile units first. So resistors are going to go in, uh, going to go in first. Then we have some some uh, capacitors. Um, we have a crap load of uh, uh, IC sockets here uh, for the ICs. It's so a lot of ICs in this machine, and uh, for sure, I I, I I could just solder them in, uh, but it's if you if you mess up one of those, and you see these boards are uh, are double sided, so if 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 it was a single-sided board, it would be no no bother to just like solder them out. But double-sided boards uh, with with these VS, it's it's um, a bit of a hassle to desolder solder uh, um, a pins. So I I I prefer to just put in a socket, and if I burn something for some reason, or or if uh, or if the yeah I have one one of the ICs is faulty, no problem. I can just I can switch them out. So. Um, this is the first uh, first thing I'm gonna break uh, Jacob's uh, uh, advice and, and just have this uh, non-turn pin. These sort of the I think they call them like, like folded uh, metal uh, uh, connectors. Uh, he uh, prefers the turn pin ones. I I am not sure if I like those actually. So I had more success with these ones. Um, uh, but after the the resistors, then the IC sockets, then we have some um, some caps, polythene caps. It's going to stand out a bit, and then we have the uh, the electrolytic caps. So no um, no really difficult parts to work with here. No really um, unique stuff on the discrete except the switches and and pots, as I said. So it should be pretty straightforward. So, so uh, this is super important. Something that I learned from from building guitar pedals is that every single resistor that, that goes on the board is measured before. Yeah, um, yes, I'm using the like the cheapest freaking uh, multi pinter you can find. You'll find that I'm pretty low fi with gear. As long as it works, it works for me. I I I don't need. A fluke. I would love to have a fluke, but I don't. I don't need it. I can. I can use this. It costs like a couple of euros. But every single resistor that goes in gets measured before and double checked. And optimally, I double check against the, the screening, the, the the print, the print screening, and the schematic. So I I know what's that it goes in the correct position. I usually print the schematic and I just give it a little. Uh, Give it a little uh, mark when I when I mount them. Uh, why is that? Yeah, because uh, if you have ever seen a resistor, you have these little uh, color markings. Sometimes red can look like orange, or sometimes red can look like brown. Every everyone has their own little color scheme on the background. It's super super easy to make mistakes. Uh, just looking at the uh, just looking at the colors. It's so easy to make mistakes that I sometimes get the wrong resistors. It's it's super. It's not a, not not common at all, but it has happened more than once that I get the wrong resistors in a bag tagged with. So this bag says, "Oh, let's like, the uh, uh, 3.9k super," and it's a it's like a, a 39k instead. It has happened. So every resistor that get that goes in 
get smashed because it just saves me heaps of time if I find, have ever pr any problem with it. Uh, I I can like swear that every resistor is. Uh, I'm, I'm almost hundred percent positive that every resistor is correct. So just to give you an idea of how I'm working here, I am. Um, I uh, have my little list here of components that I I um, I give a little notch where I when I'm done with it. So I'm having uh, two boards here, uh, two pairs of boards, and um, I just follow through. So I have four K seven. I have two of those resistors here. I've already arranged these in order. So I have. Have them there. I just pop two of them out of the bag, measure them, leave them on the bag, find them on the boards, uh, solder them, and uh, snip off the legs.